What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of Action Sunday. And this week, I'm going to continue my trend of Bond movies. So this week, I'm going to look at Diamonds Are Forever. Funny enough, since last week, I looked at uh, Dr. No, the first Bond movie ever, and also the fir first Sean Connery Bond. How appropriate this one is, the, is Sean Connery's very last Bond movie that he worked on before Mail would pass on to uh, Roger Moore, and eventually so, so on and so forth. But of course, uh, of course, the prior movie before this was Our Majesty's Secret Service, which was Lacey B's one done Bond movie, which I'm going to say, maybe I'll say that for a nerd day. Maybe, I'm not too sure, but anyway, so, so literally, Diamonds Are Forever, for those of you that have never seen any of these classic Bond movies, Diamonds Are Forever really takes place really from, um, from where Honor Massey's Secret Service left off. As you know, that one ended on a sour note, which was the death of Bond's wife, Tracy. Well, yeah, event, well, at the end of that movie, they get married, and of course, Blofeld eventually kills her, so it's a, it's a damn shame. So essentially, like, the, literally the first couple minutes is essentially just Bond finding Blofeld. And sure enough, it leads to an epic showdown, and of course, an ep and of course, a, a say, aha, he finally kills him. Or is he? So, so now with that, that in his rear view mirror, he now focuses more on like a diamond smuggling operation that's been going on. So, and of course it leads him to Las Vegas. Oh yes. And we're not, I, we're not, I forget what I said earlier, but we're not, but between, uh, this is the third Bond movie to my knowledge that where part of the plot takes place on American soil. The first, the R1 is, uh, the first is, uh, Goldfinger with Fort Knox. The R1 is View of a Kill, which is not, which is like, uh, not until much, much late, later of the franchise, you know, like the mid 80s and all that. So, yeah. But anyway, uh, so yeah, that's gonna be cool. So cool. Bond in Vegas. How appropriate it is like a match made in heaven? heaven depending on how you look at it and essentially it just unravels and go and goes on a whole tangent and i love this whole saying like literally i felt like hmm this is awesome this is bond in vegas good stuff huh i wonder huh, maybe his operation kind of puts danny ocean to shame <laughs> yeah well considering that literally like i think around the same time that diamonds are forever came out i think the first oceans movie came out well, well, tidbit, I'm not too sure I need to look into it, but hell, hell, it's a little side note, which I kind of find ironic, which is also kind of funny, considering you probably didn't know this, is that Sammy Davis Jr. had a cameo in this movie, a a, 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 a scene that was left on the A room floor, but although, though, if you have the special edition Bond movie DVDs, these, um, uh, you can easily find the scene and watch it for yourself, where you see, oh, hey, it's Sammy Davis Jr., kind of thing, and of course, it's a damn shit, damn shame, like, um, I really wish that, and even on today's streaming services, they would include the scene. They don't. What a load of shit. Come on. I, I love this. I love seeing, like, pretty cool hidden gems of, of movies. Come on. Why would you leave a scene on the cutting room floor? But anyway, beside that, let's talk Let's talk about all the other, other things about this movie. Let's see. Cast is great. I love Jill St. John as Tiffany Casey. She really pulls it together. Charles Gray plays an amazing ball film. In my opinion, one of the best... Uh, got guys who's ever played Blofeld in the in the short time that this character is mentioned in, in the first several Bond movies, it's our it's, always, it's usually a toss up either between him and Donald Pleasance in uh, you, you only live twice. And uh, let's see, hmm, who I like more? Let's see, Donald Pleasance I I kind of like because he eventually would play Doctor Loomis in Halloween. Charles Gray, uh, um. I don't know, there's something about Charles Gray that just screams like, oh, he's more menacing and terrifying and like hitting and calculating. So I don't know, it's it's up for debate what which one was better. And then of course he would eventually get killed off finally in uh, at the beginning of For Your Eyes Only, which of course that's a story for another day. F future review. But anyway, uh yeah, good stuff. Um as for gadgets and the action, um uh, let's see, not much in the way of gadgets, but I do love Q Q's little nifty little gadget trick uh, trick they had, um where he like it's like some kind of electromagnet where somehow he rigged like all these swap machines where he could somehow just wins jackpots all the time. I thought that was a well humor <laughs> a light hearted humor in the midst of a of a bit of a a dark, somewhat interesting Bond movie. Uh yeah, pretty pretty fun stuff. Uh, the villains, the other supporting villains, I, 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 I both loved and hate. It's like, okay, Mr. Kin, Mr. Wynn. Huh. No, really odd, odd pairing. I'm like, these guys, these guys are, I, I have that look of, oh God, you can't stand, but at the same time, they're like messing and calculating. And of course, Jesus Christ, that, that they're, they're shit eating grins usually just <laughs> tells me they're something up. And I, and that, that's what makes some good Bond villains, even though they're henchmen, but it, it works. 
Um, let's see, not much else I can say. It's a it's a good Bond movie, and for, for Connery Con, Connery's last Bond movie, I think it it nailed did did a good job. It really worked, and like it really really made Sean Connery just say, "All right, I did. Now I went on top. I'm done." I'm retiring the role. Roll time to give it on to someone else. Someone other than George Lazenby. When, of course, that would become Roger Moore. And, of course, uh, the rest is history. So, there you go. So, yeah. Not much else I can say. Um, the, the one the one nitpick I have on this is the villain's uh, layer. Okay? Which is the final act. Is like, well, you know, when the final shootout, the final fight. Blofeld's uh, lair is a freaking oil rig. What? You could have thought of any other thing beside a, a Vegas uh, uh, office. This is the best thing it can do, and that's a freaking oil rig? Come on. Can we get more creative than that? I'm sorry. But anyway, aside from aside from that, so good. I good. Remember what I said last week about how like Doctor No No had the Bond formula and like they, they said it, but and I said later Bond movies perfected it. I felt like this one kind of Kind of like perfected it, but not to a T. But I felt like there was still things that could have been ironed out with the perfect trying to make the perfect bond movie. But of course, it's totally up to your preference. Where you, which which bond you like? Where you like Sean Connery? Where you like Roger Moore? Or your Daniel Craig's? It doesn't matter. But still, this is a very fine, well 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 made movie, and, and of course a perfect movie to end Sean Connery's tenure as the as the titular 007 character. So with that in mind. I'm gonna give diamonds are forever, and I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. Okay, that's that's as best as I can give it. All right, so that does for a night. Let me know what you think. Thumbs up this video, subscribe to my channel, stay tuned for some more awesome, exciting videos.